One of the objectives of measuring your metabolic profile is to determine how your body uses calories while you're exercising. This measurement assesses the efficiency of your aerobic engine, the amount of oxygen that you intake, and the amount of carbon dioxide that you expel or exhaust. It's very similar to your car engine that also has an intake of oxygen and exhaust of carbon dioxide. Second, this tells us the type of fuel, whether it's fat or sugar, that you are burning at different workload intensities. Ideally, we always want to be efficiently burning fat as our energy resource. Measuring exercise metabolism provides a determination of our aerobic performance and our anaerobic recovery. In other words, how fast can we run and how fast can we recover from the effort? Our exercise metabolism is also the key to fat loss from exercise. Finally, it determines the horsepower of our engine, our VO2 max, or peak VO2. A metabolic profile is obtained by participating in an 8-12 to 12 minute assessment. This assessment consists of a progressive exercise pace, beginning at a low intensity and slowly building to an intensity at which your body is feeling some stress. The equivalent feeling of anaerobic threshold is a slight burning sensation in the leg muscles. Most assessments will be anaerobic threshold tests, or lower intensity tests, commonly referred to as a sub-max test. A peak or max test exercises the client to the point of absolute exhaustion. These tests can be performed on a cycle, a treadmill, a rower, a stair climber, or any other piece of equipment that can provide a progressive workload. And again, during the assessment, we are measuring the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide in each breath. We commonly refer to a metabolic profile as the road test of your personal fitness. If you were to take your car to a mechanic with a symptom of, it's not running right, the mechanic would conduct a road test to see what's happening. That's exactly what we're doing when we measure your metabolism. We're putting your metabolic engine through a road test. The test tells us what your capacity is for work and daily activity, and how efficiently your engine runs during varying intensities of work. The way we quantify metabolic rate is by looking for specific metabolic markers. The first metabolic marker we determine is aerobic base, or AB. This is the peak of your body's ability to utilize fat during exercise. The second metabolic marker is your anaerobic threshold, or AT. This is your highest sustainable aerobic work rate, meaning this is the highest sustainable rate at which you burn fat, although it isn't necessarily your highest fat utilization level. The third metabolic marker that we measure is peak VO2. This is the peak amount of oxygen that your body can consume. Working to maximize your aerobic base is a process of educating your muscles to efficiently utilize fat as their energy source. A positive side effect of this process is an increase in the utilization of fat relative to carbohydrates at rest, resulting in effective weight loss. It is important to understand that aerobic base is not the fat burning zone or 65% of your max heart rate that we're also familiar with on the treadmill. Working to maximize your AB is a process of educating your muscles to burn fat. The actual caloric burn rate during cardiovascular exercise is relatively low regardless of intensity. So why do it if your goal is weight loss? Because you want to teach your body to efficiently metabolize fat to burn more fat while you're exercising and burn more fat while you're sleeping or inactive. In this graph, you are looking at an illustration of fat utilization, in orange, and carbohydrate utilization, in blue. This is the profile of either a very deconditioned or, remarkably, an overtrained individual. In this profile, the client has a peak fat utilization, or AB, at a relatively low heart rate and then switches to carbohydrates as the primary energy resource throughout the rest of the workload intensities. To train a client's aerobic base, you would target the point at which their body starts losing efficiency and focus workouts there. Eventually, with training, their aerobic base will grow. This graph represents a stage 2 metabolism, where the client is burning more total calories, but also burning more calories from fat across a wider range of heart rates. Even though carbohydrates are still being utilized, fat is the primary energy resource over a much wider range. In stage 3, the client is burning fat over an even wider range and at a much higher intensity. This is a profile that would be exhibited by Lance Armstrong or a very well-conditioned athlete where the body is utilizing fat very efficiently up to high exercise intensity. Anaerobic threshold is the point at which the body loses ability to utilize oxygen and fat to efficiently create energy. 
Increasing the volume of oxygen consumed at your anaerobic threshold is the second step in improving metabolism. When running at a comfortable pace, the body uses both energy systems. The anaerobic to aerobic ratio is low enough that any lactate generated is easily removed and does not accumulate. Anaerobic threshold is the point just prior to metabolic acidosis, where lactic acid levels, concentrations, and associated gas exchange variables change disproportionately. This is also the point at which you will start to hyperventilate. The body buffers lactic acid by releasing bicarbonate HCO3 from your liver. Lactic acid plus bicarbonate yields carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is delivered back to the lungs where it is exhaled. When you start breathing hard during a very intense workout, your body is attempting to buffer excess lactic acid and is throwing off higher levels of carbon dioxide. This occurs because at high exercise intensity, your body couldn't manage the load aerobically and consequently produce an excess of lactic acid. Continually pushing yourself to a lactate burning state, such as interval training, makes your body adapt and raises your anaerobic threshold. By raising your anaerobic threshold, you increase the level of work that you can sustain over a longer period of time. This is referred to as work tolerance. By raising your AT, your body burns more calories at the same relative effort while increasing sustainable power and overall endurance. However, and this is important, you must develop aerobic base before training to increase anaerobic threshold. If you don't develop AB first, you will precondition your body toward overtraining. This is the basis of periodized cardiovascular training. A good example is base training versus threshold training or off-season versus on-season training. This concept has been practiced for years, however until now the capacity to determine an periodization could not be accomplished easily. An active metabolic assessment tells you whether an individual should be training their base or be training their threshold. Everyone looking to improve their fitness profile wants to raise their AT, but remember, you have to build base first. In this graph, we add the anaerobic threshold marker to aerobic base. In the following graphs, observe how anaerobic threshold increases with training. As aerobic base, defined as the body's ability to utilize fat, increases, anaerobic threshold, the body's highest sustainable caloric burn rate, also increases. By maximizing fat and total sustainable caloric burn rates, the client's weight loss, fitness, and performance goals can be met. The final marker is VO2 peak, not to be confused with VO2 max. In a VO2 peak assessment, the client determines the stopping point of the assessment. For a VO2 max, the client exercises to complete exhaustion or physiological crash to determine the endpoint. It is never desirable or necessary to perform a VO2 max test in a health club setting. A VO2 peak test is generally very close to an individual's max and is more than sufficient to determine their genetic aerobic potential. The only way to achieve their potential is to first train their base and then their threshold. However, very few people ever truly reach their full genetic potential for oxygen uptake. It is advisable to follow a pre-test checklist to properly prepare for an exercise metabolic assessment. The steps include, always make sure that the new leaf system is plugged in for at least one hour prior to testing. This is a necessary warm-up procedure for the gas analyzer's stability. Put the heart rate chest strap on the client right side up in the center of the chest just below the pectoral muscles. Be certain the chest strap is as tight as possible while still maintaining the comfort of the client. If the client feels discomfort with the mask, allow them to breathe normally with the mask on for about 10 minutes prior to starting the test. You also want to choose a modality and a protocol that makes sense for your client. If a client is a runner or usually exercises on a treadmill, test them on a treadmill. If they usually exercise on an elliptical, test them on either a treadmill or an elliptical as they are both weight-bearing activities. If your client is a cyclist, test them on a bike. Every range of motion and the resulting metabolic response on the various pieces of aerobic equipment is specific, so client assessments to determine their heart rate training zones should be based on the piece of exercise equipment that they plan to use. An appropriate protocol should be selected for your client, and as directed by the software, you are going to toggle speed, watts, and or grade at rates appropriate to the individual. Again, the software walks you through the process by means of the protocol that you choose. 
In selecting a protocol, one do you run? If an individual says, yes, I run, the next question is, what pace can you sustain for 30 minutes? Most individuals will respond with a number, which may be in such terms as a 6-minute mile, a 10-minute mile, or miles per hour, based on their treadmill work. If they cannot sustain any pace for 30 minutes, or they do not run, default to the no category because they are not truly a runner. A good exercise assessment will show a slow linear increase in heart rate, with a matching increase in VO2 as workload increases. The other hallmark of a good assessment will show the RQ value dropping below 1.0 and then climbing back to 1.0 over the course of 8 to 12 minutes. On occasion, something can go wrong during the assessment, and at that point we need to determine whether the assessment is valid or if it should be stopped. Use these criteria to stop the assessment. If you see no data on the screen after 2 minutes into the test, if the respiratory quotient does not drop below 1.0, or if the heart rate doesn't change for three to four minutes, or there is not a clean heart rate response, 